Hey guys, I think what I'm going to do in this video here is I'm going to evaluate the differences between these two engines that I have. One that I've had from the beginning uh, of this build and I was going to initially use, but Go Power Sports sent me one of their performance engines and I'm going to show you the differences between what I have and what they sent me. All right, so here's the two engines that we've got. We've got theirs and then we have the one that, that uh, my mine. Both of these engines are relative, they're relatively the same type of engine, but what they had sent me is a slightly different than what you see here. This is the regular uh, Harbor Freight engine, older model one. This is one of their Greyhound versions that I ended up painting up. You can see the blue right there that I painted over. This engine I've had for quite some time. I've done no modifications to it at all, except for put on this extra air filter adapter and this is the engine that had that tipped over <laughs> that the kids tipped over and the bowl filled up with oil and all sorts of stuff um i put this little rubber cap over the fuel line so that way gunk doesn't get down inside of there and i've taken this engine and put it inside the hyperion cart when i was putting stuff together and i decided to do it use this engine because this engine is kind of old and it, you know getting welding splatter and stuff like that on it really wasn't all that big of a deal just considering that the engine's like four or five years old if not older than that because i well they've had predator out for such a quite long time so these predator engines uh are the clone engines to the honda gx 200s i've done nothing with the governor on this at all it's still all hooked up the same way uh, i've still got my torque converter piece on there uh, in the time period of having this, this uh, my electrical line is starting to get dry, a little bit of dry rot from heat, stuff like that. So one of these days I might have to swap this out for a new line if I can find one somewhere. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking this yellow case and the pull cord and stuff and transferring it over to here. Hopefully it's uh, it'll all fit right, but I'm looking at the bolt pattern, I'm pretty sure it will. Now, this is the uh, modified Predator engine uh, from Go Power Sports that they sent me. And this engine came with... Oh, well, actually, I want to point something out here first. When I got this air filter adapter right here, because I wanted to take off the old plastic, crazy, insane piece, uh, I bought this air filter adapter here. And I don't know if you guys can remember the video where I was talking about the holes that I had to drill out. And I, I did that. And um, I just haven't started the engine yet. But when I got this air filter adapter, it didn't come with uh, a piece that would hold this choke down. Now, and uh, when you take these things, when, when you buy these clone engines, they come with these. And part of this fits up over the the uh, choke now it's kind of a bad thing because these chokes can slide right off so if you're ever going to do something like what i've got here you're going to want to get like some type of uh maybe a piece of sheet metal and adapt it onto here that comes off and bends down and then has a it's kind of maybe like a little l piece or s piece that comes up It'll come down, go across, and then push down on this. Because the vibration of these engines can cause these things to vibrate off. If you're driving around, then you'll lose it. And then you have to, every time you start it, you have to turn this little goofy thing with your fingers and get real close to the engine all the time. So um, keep that in mind when it comes to buying an adapter. But on this engine, on the other hand, this engine came pre-fitted pre with this adapter. And it has this little uh, arm that pushes down on to the choke so yeah oops i shouldn't have done that haha <laughs> it's got this gauze stuff in there great but this adapter fits that air filter so when i got this engine it came with this air filter and that exhaust pipe and this fits really this fits i had to do some modifications to the go-kart side paneling to compensate for this air filter because this air filter 
like you know, sti- sticks out the side uh, of the machine. And see, I kind of messed it up a little bit there. <laughs> Great. Something else I had to do is while this air filter was on here, I had to hack off about eight, uh, well, no, it was about a half of an inch of this plastic housing so the filter wouldn't stick out so far from the side of the machine. So I'm going to be putting this air filter on there and button it up as close as I possibly can all the way up to the this little arm here. So bracket. So I'll be squeezing it on there and then tilting it upward. And then the exhaust pipe will be going on over on the other side here. And it's already, it came with a gasket. Now this engine, since it is kind of a performance engine, uh, I'm going to have to take the gas tank off and refit it with this, which is the new gas tank with a filter that's going to go on the machine. So that's going to run down to the new engine. Now this new engine has, I don't know if they actually I, uh, removed the governor or not. I don't know if they really, I don't know if they did that, but I have this extra spring that connects to the arm, to the governor arm that would go up and connect to the uh, rod that goes down and then, you know, makes contact with the governor gear. Well, I've got this spring in here, so I don't know if they've actually opened this thing up to and remove the governor or not i won't be able to tell that until i start the engine and start running it because if this arm starts to move you know with uh with the revving of the engine or whatever then i'm going to know that the governor is still in, in in inside and still connected it's just that this spring here creates more tension so the governor gear uh has more um it doesn't work as good so the rpms should be able to go higher with this extra spring in here it's also been rejetted, so there's new jets in it. I'm going to have to figure out a filter, put a filter over the, the valve for the valve cover pressure inside there. And I was going to use one of these, but that don't fit down in there. I mean, it fits, but it's too loose. So I'm going to have to get a little hose clamp or something like that down in there or to clamp that on. So I'd like to do that. Just a simple little fuel filter so that way gunk doesn't get inside here let's uh take all this paneling off and put it over on this engine and uh see how that looks well okay got that transferred over the paneling notice that uh the new engine didn't have one of these spacers in it uh, like what was on the uh greyhound engine so when I, uh, I had the spacer in there and I went to pull and the pins wouldn't grab this and they'd expand out to grab this. So I removed the spacer, put, put it on there directly and now it catches. So now I'm going to put the air filter on here and, uh, I already took the tank off. I got a little piece of hose here that I cut off and put some hot glue in because I'm not really ready to hook this up yet. So to plug that up, yeah, so that way gunk doesn't get down inside of here. Oh, and the spring here was connected to the bolt underneath the gas tank. So I had I put in a little carriage bolt there put the spring on that so that's what i'm connecting that's what my that's what the spring is connected to on now i went a little too ahead of myself and i should have taken this is this is the ground wire or one of them and it's got a little connector that's going to connect to that bolt but i'll wait to do that because i think i might put a uh, switch up on top that comes down in line with this so just in case I ever take it someplace and I don't want people to take off on it or anything like that, I can actually reach inside and turn this off and turn the switch on up here off. So if people try to turn this on, there's still no connection to start the engine. Uh, two kill switches. So I might do that. 
Uh, yeah, so now let's put the air filter on and the exhaust on here and see what she looks like. Okay, guys, I just got this all back together. Um, this one I had a little bit trouble with because the center piece that's inside here on the engine, uh, I didn't put this spacer back in when I put this back together. And that center piece was pushing against the plastic in here, so I couldn't pull start it. You know, I couldn't pull on it. So I had to put this uh, spacer back in on this engine. Uh, I don't have, there's no spacer on here, so, but that works. And this one works too. Whoa. Okay, well, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's one reason why you need to get a filter on these things, on your overhead valve uh, cover thing, because uh, that equals the pressure as the piston's going down, up and down inside the engine. Plus, it helps uh, regulate heat and stuff. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you want to make sure you put this up, hook this up to a filter or something. All right, or you don't ever want to leave this open. You know, I've seen some people's engines where they pull this hose out and they just leave it like that. Wrong. Bad. Because you get dirt inside there when you're driving around and it messes up with your lifters and all sorts of stuff. So you want to leave this hose in here and get a filter for it. That's what you want to do. So, yeah, so this new engine is the one that's going to be going on the Hyperion cart that's hanging up right here. I just painted up the frame. It's hanging from some rafters. Joy! Yep. Yeah, and another thing is that if you're ever going to be storing an engine or putting it up or something like that, you always want to make sure that you close off any ports or holes or anything that could be get gunk in them. So I'm going to cover this thing up here. There you go. That's covered up. Got my exhaust plugged. And all right, looks good. So yeah, I'm eager to test this engine out, but I won't be testing it out until I get it all hooked up. The one thing that that's holding me back on getting the the whole Hyperion cart done is my throttle cable. That's the one thing that that's holding me back. So I gotta figure out if I've got anything sitting around here, which I don't think I do, because all the cables I've got are all frayed. They're all frayed ends, and that's too much crap to deal with. And I might have to go down to one of these bike places and see if they've got any bike any uh. Uh, you know, like, uh, not brake cables, but the uh, shifter cables on 10 speeds or uh, mountain bikes. <laughs> 10 speeds. <laughs> Most of you guys have no idea what I just said. But, yeah, mountain bikes. The little shifter cables. Because the shifter cables aren't as thick and girthy as the brake cables are. So, maybe I'll look around for that. But anyways, guys, this engine was provided by Go Power Sports. And this engine was provided by me. I just swapped these. All right, see you guys later.